This is a video about difficult isotopic abundance questions. So before we look at the difficult one, let's just remind ourselves of a fairly simple question. If we look at this graph here, this is for magnesium. And this is a graph of the mass spectrum of magnesium. And when we look in nature, we find that 79% 79, 79 of all the magnesium that we find has a mass of 24. 10% of all the magnesium we find has a mass of 25, and 11% of all the magnesium we find in nature has a mass of 26. So how do we work out the relative atomic mass from that, the one displayed in the periodic table? Well, it's a fairly straightforward calculation. We're just going to do 24 times 79 plus 25 times 10 plus 26 times 11 and divide it by 100 as they all add up to 100 in this case. Now here's a more difficult question for us. Um, something a bit new for the new chemistry syllabus. So it says that the relative atomic mass of antimony is 121.8 and it exists as two isotopes antimony 121 and antimony 123. Calculate the relative abundance of the two isotopes. So this is going to involve quite a bit more work. Now if it's a multi-choice question and we, we could do something that would help us guess the answer but we might actually be asked to calculate the actual answer. So I'm going to talk about both ways to do it. One way to to, to come up with an answer quickly by guessing. We could write out that equation there and we could have a guess. We could have an educated guess because, well, we know it's not 50 50. We've got 121 times x plus 125 times y. If that was 50 50, the answer would be 122. So actually, we know that there must be more x than there is y. So if we took an educated guess, we could try putting in 55 there and 45 there and quickly slot those numbers in. And if we did that, we would find actually we'd get a figure of 121.9. So it wouldn't be accurate, but in a multi-choice situation, that might be a quick way to decide um, which which letter to choose, that would be the letter closest to 55 and 45 um, would give you your answer. But what if it wasn't a multi-choice question? We had to actually come up with the precise answer. That's going to involve a little bit more work. So we're going to tackle this by doing a bit of algebra. GCSE Maths Algebra. So we're going to write it out like so. And you'll see the first thing I've got rid of is the Y. In the original guess we had, a, we guessed an X figure and we guessed a Y figure, but those of you that are a bit more astute would have realized that if this figure goes up to 55, that figure must be 45. If this goes up to 60, that must be 40. So, so this figure here, as long as it's out of 100 at the bottom, is related to x. Well, it's 100 minus x. And it's that piece of information which is going to allow us to work this out. So this is what the equation looks like now. So what we need to do next is, is simplify the equation. We can do that by crossing through the 100 there. 100 divided by 100 is 1. And that leaves us with 123. And then I'm going to put it in the bracket like that. It's equal to 1 minus x. And then we're going to times out this bracket. And when we do that, we get 123 times 1 and 123 times x. So we're going to end up with 123 minus 123x. We haven't looked at this bit yet. So what's an easy way we can use to try and get x on its own? So first of all, we can do something about that. We can take that over 
to here and when we do that this is what we're going to be left with and then the next step so when you, when you take away 128 from minus 120 you're going to get minus 1.2 and then if you take 121x from 123x you're going to be left with minus 2x now you're left with an occasion with which you'd be very familiar with, with three parts in and a multiplication there. Okay, so it's an, uh, going to be an easy rearrangement to do minus 1.2 divided by minus 2 equals x, so x equals 0.6. So what we can do with that now is, is we can take that 0.6 back up to here, 121 times 0.6. One minus point is going to be 0.4. So 121 times 0 0.6 plus 123 and 1 minus 0 0.4 equals 121.8. So that proves that x is 0 0.6 or 60% and y is 0 0.4 or 40%. And that is the answer.